So what we're going to do first is we're going to design a base in Rhino. Rhino is a rhinoceros is a 3D modeling program that I use for uh, all the instruments that I've ever built. Um, I used to design them in here and then print them at Kinko's and then cut them out and then recently um, started doing it with a CNC machine. So just kind of cutting out the Kinko's middleman. So um, what we're going to do uh, over the next few videos is design a base in Rhino. And then the uh, after that, we will turn the files, the lines you see here, into um, G-code that can be read by a CNC machine that can cut out your your base that you desire. So uh, just bear in mind that this isn't meant to be a tutorial in Rhino. Uh, all it's going to be, I'm, I'm going to move through making the instrument pretty quick just to keep the length of the whole thing short. If there's anything that you want to learn about uh, uh, Rhino and the ways to use it. Um, there's like plethora of tutorials on Rhino, or excuse me, on YouTube about uh, how to use Rhino. And if you have a specific question about how to do something that you see me do, um, feel free to to hit me up uh, by PM or or in the thread. I uh, I don't claim to be an expert, but I can I can get things done in Rhino. So let's close this model. Um, this is one that I've been working on. It's the one I'll probably use to. Uh, actually uh, make the g-code but let's let's walk through how to actually do it so let's close this and uh, let's make a new file and then let's save it as new base all right now let's uh, set up the document so that uh, things are the right size when we build it. I like to make the grid have minor lines every one inch and major lines every 12 so it's like a big uh, work table with square feet. Snap set to one. All right and then Let's go into Rhinoceros Preferences and go to Modeling Aids and check that the nudges for arrows, nudge direction is in view axes, nudge steps are one, a tenth, and a thousandth. And we're good. Let's make a base. Okay, first thing that we have to do is lay out the scale length. So let's turn off our object snaps and just use regular grid snap so that it's right. Make a line that is 34 inches long. This corresponds to our scale. Oh, 34, shift. All right, 34 inch scale. Now the next thing that we need to do is uh, establish the bridge width and the nut width. Um, basing this on like standard jazz, Fender jazz um, sizes. Oh. So. Let's go uh, an inch and a half for the nut. And let's go two and a quarter for the bridge. And let's uh, draw in the string a uh, little. Let's put some points for the string. So we'll divide curve by number of segments. We'll divide it by three because there's three spaces, and we'll mark the ends. All right, we got four strings. Now we are for uh, you know, basically where the saddles would be theoretically. Uh, now let's uh, curve, extend curve. And we're going to extend uh, this each side 0.25 inches. And the reason that I do this, um, I go I go a quarter inch past where the bridge would be, or this where the 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 E string and the G string would be. And uh, this makes um, kind of like a like a 
a, a good starting point to draw your fingerboard. You're drawing the fingerboard for the whole length of the instrument, but you're not going to use all of it, obviously. Um, if you connect the dots from the E string and the G string to the nut, what you end up with is a bass that uh, has a neck that's too narrow at the heel, and the strings will kind of roll off um, when you're playing down there. They might actually roll off the fingerboard. So um, a good rule of thumb that I use is an eighth of an inch on the edges up at the nut and a quarter inch at the bridge, and then it just it is what it is uh, along the way. All right. So the next thing we want to do is place the scale. Um, you can you can get a scale length from a lot of different places. I personally have a uh, um, Excel spreadsheet that I made that generates my scale lengths for me using like the most accurate formula that I could find. Um, you might choose to just use the, the Stumac calculator and that works fine. Just uh, creates, um, you know, you put in how long of a scale, uh, number of frets, and it'll tell you the distances from the nut to each fret. Um, so now um, what we have to do is just go in and plug them in. I like to start at the nut. Oh, and I don't build the scale like on here. I build it off to the side um, that way. I can draw lines from it and um, just hide it later so that I can always have it there for reference. So um, first fret, let's go command copy and paste, transform move from there and point move to 1.9083. Uh, what I'm doing is just copying and pasting that same dot here and then looking at my scale over here and each one of these is uh, uh, the the distance to each fret from the nut so this is kind of tedious but um, 0.7094 but the good thing is that you really only have to do it once if you build another 34 inch scale base you can just go back and um, copy and paste the dots and uh, and your scale is done. Matter of fact, I do that all the time. Um, but we're just gonna do all of them. As we go. All right. All right, so now we have all of the uh, dots the, uh, for, that represent where the scale is going to be. So the next thing that you can do is um, just draw like a theoretical fret. Um, I just make them three inches long and uh, oh, gotta be careful uh, to if you're gonna have object snap on for point versus um, having snap to the grid. So uh, now we would just go through and put all the frets in. Um, so you can do the same same thing, just command copy and paste. Uh, as long as you have point on, you shouldn't have any problems on O snap. So transform move from point to point. You'll get uh, you'll find that um, you rely on keyboard shortcuts. Uh, a lot when you get proficient with Rhino. Um, command, copy, and paste is probably the most useful one you'll use all the time. Um, all right, so now we have uh, some theoretical frets from uh, 1 all the way out to 21. Um, and that's so the first thing that I want to do is define the um, edges of this of the fretboard. So transform move, and like I said, um, uh, 0.125 or one eighth of an inch. Um, oh, wrong dot. Transform move from intersection to 0.125. All right, so now that's what we have to work with. 
so uh, as as noted in the in the outline on the thread, um, you take the strings that you plan on using, um, which I, I have just kind of laid out in a text document here. Um, I'm going to use dr lowriders, and uh, so g is 0.045, d 0.065, a 0.085, and e 0.105 for a total. Uh, all your strings added up is 0 0.300. Um, and now if you take that nut width, which is 1.5, and you subtract the um, edges that you want to leave um, open, and you subtract that string width, then what you have left is 0.95 inches. Um, that's like the total spaces between the four strings. So now you just take that spacing and divide it by 3, gives you 0 0.3166. So now what you have to draw is each one of the, um, each, each hit on the nut, basically. So since we're, we're going to start at the top and work down, um, the E string is 0.105, so let's copy and paste, copy and paste, transform, move, and turn on O snaps for point, point two, point 0.105. Enter. All right, and now we got to add a space. So command copy and paste, transform, move from the point to point three one six six. Enter. All right, and now we're gonna do the A string, which is point zero eight five. Other space. D string is uh, 0 0.065. Another space and transform move from point to 0.3166. All right, and so if you did everything right, um, this should be this should equal whatever you selected for your um, G string. So if you go to analyze distance. Point to point should be 0 0.045. Good to go. All right, nut is laid out. Um, now what we're going to actually do is draw in the strings. Um, you want to have, if you remember, we uh, drew four points for the centers of the bridges. I'm using a hip shot A style bridge, which I will put in in a second. Um, so uh, three, uh, three quarter inch. We took two two and a quarter, and we divided it up by three so analyze distance so each one of these should be 0.75 right so um, <clears throat> we don't really have anything to connect the dots to yet so what we have to do is find the midpoint of each one of these strings so all I do is select all <clears throat> we're gonna split this line so let's go to split select objects to split and then select the cutting objects and hit enter. All right, and so now this is split. And so if we turn on point and midpoint, we can draw a polyline from the midpoint of that because it's now it's its own little entity now, all the way to point. And do that for all four. And the last one, midpoint. Right, and now um, not only have I established an equal space nut, but now I can use this to just draw in the strings. And that's pretty useful for <clears throat> making your tuners tangent to the strings with a, with a break. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to move these. Transform, move, from midpoint. Point 
good point to point. Good point to point. Oh. And then um, we'll just copy them, copy and paste, transform, move from point to point. And now we've drawn the strings. Oh, copy and paste. All right, so that's what it's going to look like up at the nut, and then um, down at the bridge, you've got, um, you know, it's it's they're still centered, but um, there's no actual line down the center of the string because at this point, like that that line down the center of the string wouldn't be useful for anything. You could redraw it if you wanted to, but um, we're going to draw a headstock eventually, and. Um, Part of that uh, drawing the headstock is having um, the strings that go out so that you can use it to set your tuners. So let's do an extend curve and um, enter value. So say like nine, nine inches, and because we're going to trim them later. And then so each one that we click, the string is just going to extend out an additional nine inches. So we could do like super mega headstock if we wanted to. We won't use it all, obviously, but there you go. All right. Um, so then the next thing that we want to do is um, let's place some parts. Um, the thing about um, designing is uh, is that you might have an idea about what parts you want to use. Um, I usually do when I start, um, and so I'll I'll pull the actual data sheet from like HipShot or Goto or whatever to get the part dimensions. Um, Stumac has a pretty good collection of them as well. Um, or uh, you can just make a file that has the parts that you use pretty commonly and then you can just copy and paste. So here's a Hipshot A bridge. It's actually not drawn like um, representationally. It's just drawn like here's the here's the drill holes to mount it to the body and then here's the string holes. Um, I didn't even put like the farthest extent of the uh, saddles, but we can just eyeball that for now and then measure it later. So let's grab those, and while we're at it, let's grab these um, jazz pickups and let's grab this tuner. So we'll just command copy and close that file and command paste. And now they are in the model. Um, that bridge happened to just land like where it would go. Um, let's say it was just like over here though. Uh, the first thing is that um, if this is if you group it, if you go edit groups and then group, you can put things together so they behave like one entity. Um, so the way that I would probably put this in into this model would be a transform move and uh, turn on snaps. And so we'll go from point and then we'll just snap it somewhere close and then. Um, you can measure to uh, see what the actual saddle extent is. Um, as, as you probably know if you've built a base, you always want to set your um, saddles so that if they're all the way forward, they're at your theoretical scale length. Like this is built for 34, so um, you want to make it so that you have plenty of room to move the strings back. The only reason you'll ever move the, bridge, the saddles forward is if you place the bridge wrong um, or if your neck isn't sitting right or something. Uh, but they but to compensate they'll always go back so um, that looks pretty good right there the strings all hit on the center lines that I built for my little skeleton of a hip shot a um, next thing is the pickups um, actually these aren't grouped so you know let's go ahead and do that real quick edit group and edit And we'll just we'll do the same thing, transform move and then snap it to the center line. Point to center line. And now it's up to you to decide like where you want to put them on this scale. But honestly, like I would probably just kind of work on the body first and then place them. You might have 
your own mojo where you like the pickups to be spaced in which case you know you have the tools now to place them where you want um i'll be honest i tend to just put them where they look good um <clears throat> so then the next thing that we want to do is take our little goto uh mini tuner and put it out here uh where the headstock would go um another just guideline that i use it's by no means a rule but um i tend to try to keep the tuners about the first tuner um, about two inches away from the nut and that just keeps it from getting in the way of your hand um, and it also gives you know a decent amount of room to work like because you're gonna have a truss rod cover in here and stuff so let's just make four of these so command copy and paste and copy and paste and command copy and paste all right and now um, what you can do is just set them up uh, I have I have these models made, so they're kind of loosely based on the Stumac ones. Um, they uh, now what you want to do is just make them so that they're tangent to each string. Um, this is going to be, as you saw in the original model, kind of a Kramer style hockey puck headstock. I've never made one of those, and they look cool. So, um, so you can grab it. And you remember we set our nudge settings to thousandths. So now if you go shift and then arrow up and down. Like you're just moving them a little tiny bit. So it doesn't have to be like perfect. You could use the tools for that, but um, you know, that's that's about as close to tangent as it needs to be. I can't cut a nut more precise than that because I still do them by hand. So good enough. All right, and then the next one, um, can you use command nudge to get it close and then shift nudge to get it dead on. So now each one of our strings is tangent to the tuner. Um, just real quick word, um, as we uh, build our, our model, um, Note that like there's layers that are just appearing over here. That's because um, I'm copying and pasting stuff from um, other models that have layer names. As you build a model, like you should, you're gonna have a ton of layers. Each each thing should be in its own layer, right? Um, that way, it keeps you from um, from uh, deleting things on accident. And it also uh, having like each little entity in its own layer also um, keeps uh, keeps things simple when you when you go to do your cam so use your layers and use them often um, so we're not going to design the headstock yet the next video is going to be for design um, right now we're just getting our critical dimensions down so we have a scale that we can just slide over here we haven't used it yet um, we have some tuners placed we know our scale length we know our bridge width we know our pickups um, we know what we want to use we haven't really placed those yet but they're there um, the last thing that we care about is um, some guidelines for a general body size. Um, I, you can just kind of start sketching if you want, but what I like to do is I tend to have an idea in my head before I start of how big of a body is going to be. And if you've followed any of my build threads on Talkbase, um, you know that I, I tend to personally gravitate toward pretty tiny guitar bodies and bass bodies. So um, let's draw. Um, some guidelines. So the first thing I want to do is uh, this body is going to be 12 inches wide, um, kind of a, a tiny little curbo thing. So two, four, six. So we'll just draw like basically like if we were drawing the blank that we're going to be cutting this from. Let's draw another one. Two, four, six. So that's our 12 inches. Uh, the next thing um, I like to have, you know, just about, you know, maybe maybe three inches, maybe so just a just a little bit behind the um, the bridge itself. You don't need much back there. So this is going to be, uh, you know, it looks like about an inch and a half behind where the actual bridge will sit, pretty close. 
Um, you know, maybe we can just push it out there and see what happens with the design. Um, and then the next thing that you want to place is your horn. Uh, as you know, every, as the standard is on talk bass, most people will tell you that like if you want a bass to hang right, you put the horn at the twelfth fret. You can cheat and go in a little bit, but you're you're getting you're risking neck dive. So let's just play safe with this one, and we'll draw a line at the twelfth fret. Um, you could count out what your twelfth fret is, but uh, everybody knows that um, seventeen inches is half of thirty-four, which is your twelfth fret, right? So you can measure that too. Um, so you can just do it that way. Just draw a line at the nut, transform, move to seventeen. Oh, let's extend our. Actually, you know we don't need to extend it. Um, then the uh, the lower horn, like wherever you want that. Um, I tend to, you know, the, we're we're playing with the jazz, so the end of the horns around the sixteenth fret, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we'll put the lower horn extension like right there, ish. Um, the last critical dimension that we care about is the hips, where the body width is going to come in. Um, it's in my experience building tiny bodies that if you get it much narrower than seven inches in here, um, it kind of gets uncomfortable to play with it sitting on your leg if you're sitting down. Um, so uh, we'll just draw some guidelines. And uh, so that's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, three and a half on the bottom and three and a half on the top. All right. So this is, you know, a very rough start to our base. In the next video, what we're going to do is actually use the drawing tools to try to draw a body in. So it's like we've done the engineering now. We get to do the art. So thanks for watching, and I'll have the other video up soon.